Having just been through the Rossiter factory, we were able to connect with its new owner for his perspective on the boats. So Blair, how did you get involved with Rossiter in the first place? I was an owner of the Rossiter boat. It was definitely an initiative of the, you know, the heart rather than the head. But a couple years in, we put a really strong foundation in place, which should serve the company well deep into the future. Outside of just that's where they've always been made, is there a reason why you'd build boats in Ontario? Probably the single largest hurdle that the company has to overcome is doing business in Canada. And there's tremendous pride in the fact that we, you know, produce these boats in Ontario, Canada, notwithstanding all the challenges and saving a company that's manufacturing something here. There's not many of us left. As an Ontario builder or a Canadian builder, then how do you stay competitive in this sort of more global market? The easiest and best way is just to do what we do, which is, you know, Rossiter is a, an iconic Canadian brand, equally known for its classic design as it is for the quality of construction and the strength of its performance. What we do have going for us is that the boat was originally designed and engineered for outboard power. And here, you know, 30 years later, we find ourselves in the middle of a tremendous global secular trend towards outboard power. What does the future hold for Rossiter? I think we'd like to be able to, you know, meet the, the built-in demand that we're facing in our current markets, expand our presence in U.S. coastal markets where we already do really well with the roster 20 and 23. So there's hurdles to jump over, there's burdens to bear, but to date we're doing okay and uh, we just have to be disciplined. And, and I think that in the future we'll do just fine. The newest boat in Rossiter's lineup of outboard runabouts was demanded by its fiercely loyal customers who wanted something between the 17 and 23 foot models. The result is a classically designed but surprisingly utilitarian runabout that oozes quality craftsmanship and attention to detail. This is the Rossiter 20 Coastal Cruiser. I really love this layout. Even with how simple it is, it's still one of the more unique cockpits I've seen with this full length bench along the port side, these rear facing seats behind the consoles, and these removable cushions, which hide the transom walkthrough. I grew up with a strict no stepping on the seats rule, which to give my old man credit is smart. You can do a lot of wear and tear to your upholstery if you're stepping on it all the time, but something like this would have really helped. Almost every boat I get in has the dual bucket seat layout, but Rossiter has put in this double wide bolstered bench so you and your partner can ride off in the sunset together. Obviously Rossiter's building boats for happy families, not like these other guys putting all that space between the captain and the co-captain. One of the great things about outboard power is the space that it gives you on board, but that often comes at the expense of the swim platform. But check out the size of this great big swim platform here. It's built right in the hull, so almost full beam access. There's a four-step ladder recessed into the floor, wet storage compartment, battery access. Again, just smart, simple design all over this boat. In the transom, we find a pop-up ski pylon that stows and locks away flush. Teak accented storage along both gunnels is easy to access, while dry compartments under each seat can keep life jackets and other gear fresh and out of the way. Seat cushions hold in place with a jigsawed tab that fits snugly into the storage lid only while it's locked. The larger storage in the aft bench can be optioned as a live well, and that starboard bench can be removed in a flash to open up more room in the cockpit. Seagrass mat snaps into the flooring where faux teak marine mat is also an option. A great big locker in the floor can hold skis and paddles easily. Both the passenger seat and the double wide helm are bolstered. I like the look and simplicity of the helm with wood finish and rockered switches easily accessible. And the dash has room for a 10 inch graph to sit flush mount just below eye level. And vents on the side windshield let in a nice breeze on a hot day. Under the foredeck is a cuddy cabin that can be used as storage, a day bed, or even a head. And the compartment door is well designed with a convenient step up to access the bow, where we find an anchor locker that can fit both a windlass and an optional four-step reboarding ladder. Like I said, I'm really curious about the time to plane on this R20. I mentioned the weight displacement, but also the deep V hull has a lifting pad on the center line, and that's designed to put the boat right up on top of the water. So I'm expecting big things. Here we go, moment of truth. Ha, ah, look at that. Almost no bow rise. We're up on plane like that. That is sweet. 
This thing rips, man. This is a really nice ride. Now, there aren't a lot of boats under 22 feet that I'd feel comfortable taking out on Georgian Bay or Lake Ontario or the Gulf of Mexico, but this thing punches way above its weight class. I think it can do big water, even though it's a relatively small package. The deep hull really slices through the waves. The ride comfort is incredible, and it looks great doing it. Now, that's a really nice cruise. 29 miles per hour, about 4,000 RPMs, burning seven gallons per hour. See how it takes these bumps. It's not easy to build brand loyalty in the marine market, but Rossiter's managed to put together a pretty devoted group of owners by finding something that works and sticking to it. This is a really impressively built boat made to stand the test of time that's built right here in Ontario.